So the reason I'm looking below is because I have my laptop over here. Oh, that's just creating some nice shade. Ooh, mm, okay. But it's in charge, so we'll work with it. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Jeshri. I'm your host. And in this channel, we talk about brand identity, visual designs, and I also share my processes about how I provide my branding and design services to my clients. So let's get into it. So I recently got this client. Uh, they already have a logo and they wanted a little bit of uh, coherence in their brand identity. They didn't have any brand identity. So, this client of mine only wanted one consultation book from me where I could give him all the advice on what he needs to do in order to get his brand to look premium. And what I'm going to do is see what their products are, uh, what their logo is, and I'm going to provide him some advice on how he could make his packaging and logo look premium with whatever sources they already have and uh, let's see how we can help out this brand T brand so that this brand stand out in the market that is so competitive so so when i got into a call with this client he told me that he has already printed the logo on about thousand of these packaging so they want to continue using those and he wants me to come up with a solution uh, where he can currently uh, utilize them and uh, also if we have a little bit of a different design approach he's totally cool with implementing them in the future printing of the packaging so i'm going to provide him a current solution at the same time i'm going to provide him with a solution that will help him in long term so i'm going to go and start writing down the things that i think he could iterate and uh, you know he could make changes as a whole in terms of his branding in terms of his uh, product representation and once i write them down i'll be able to come up with the uh, sketches that will explain to him as to why the change is necessary and how this change in his branding will make his uh, products look more elevated, more classy, more polished. Post that, we'll make a proper presentation for him and we will add imagery, we'll add references, we will write down the details about what they could do um, consistently. Even if the brand identity is handled by a different designer, they'll get to see this presentation and they will know what exactly they need to do in order to make their branding look consistent premium and uh, start out in the crowd. So this is day two and as you can see it's extremely bright and shiny but this is all the lighting I have. Actually I'm kind of loving the sunlight. Anyway, so I have finished making the presentation that I have created for my client and uh, it has turned out well. It took me one day 
including all the things that I shot yesterday. If I had not shot that, maybe I would have finished much sooner. So let's get into the deck. Uh, firstly, I have the slide of the client's name and what this is about. Um, that's pretty standard. There's nothing to learn there. Then we get into brand packaging design because that's exactly what the client wanted. So the first uh, slide includes stuff that they could do for their current packaging, uh, which is increasing the size of the card that they are using um, for the information. Uh, they could make it make the card longer. So I talk about the dimensions. I could sh I show how they need to uh, make the logo bigger than the current the previous way they had printed. Uh, I also I have added the content that needs to be in the front side of the card. Um, let's say we have an illustration. We have the name of the flavor. Then um, I give him. Um, instructions as to what are the things he could add in his multiple flavors. So I added one example, but he could follow the same format in all of his flavors. Then I also tell him what kind of illustrations he could use and how he could replicate that in his other um, flavors as well. Uh, so I tell him that we need to use same side of illustration, which is very important. Whenever we are creating a coherent packaging, illustration cannot be watercolors in one and outline design in another. So you need to keep it consistent in all, um, you know, in all types of your packaging for a single brand. So it stands out. It remains coherent, and people can be like, "Oh, this kind of illustration I've specifically seen in this brand." So that's why we need to keep it coherent. Alright, so then we jump into, um, you know, what kind of colors we can use. I've suggested that maximum using two colors because any more than that is just a lot more work. And to keep uh, packaging coherent with more colors is very difficult. We can do it. There are examples, there are amazing examples. But when he's starting, I suggest that he goes, you know, just plain and simple. Okay, moving on, I also show him some few examples of what kind of illustrations he, he could use. Uh, my most favorite one is the detailed dark illustrations. This cannot go wrong. This looks really catchy. This looks like a hipster brand, but still very premium. And I would immediately go to it. It's just something that I love. And I think in a, any packaging, it is very enticing to see a very detailed illustration. I feel like it attracts customers a lot, at least for me it does. So then we jump into simple outline illustrations, which you cannot go wrong in. So it's like a least risky kind of illustration. So you could create it. It's just a simple outline. Um, it's still enticing. It makes it look very friendly, cute, and uh, you know, welcoming. And it's pretty casual in nature. If that is the brand look he wants to go for in future, he could totally do that. Uh, but it still does the job. So I suggested that. Then there are single line illustrations, which is just a little risky. If he could get the right artists to do single illustrations, single line illustrations, then he could totally make this work. Then we go on to the future packaging ideas. So what he could do in future uh, with his packaging. Um, I knew that he wanted to use only stickers for his commercial packaging. He sent me uh, that in the brief itself so i thought why not use stickers on all of them and make the design of the sticker really cool so that was one of the suggestions so here i added the advantages and disadvantages of him using stickers the one of the major advantages in this is because because he was having a card on top of the packaging commercial um, consumer packaging he uh, the card would be removed by the con uh, consumers i feel like the card uh, or whatever the packaging is, people should have uh, it available because it's called a recall value. So in order to recall what they have purchased and what they, um, they are using and to get more information about it, people need to have the product name and the other details intact. And it's like a Ziploc package that he has. So I'm pretty sure they will not keep the staple portion of it. Um, and that's why I suggested this as the major idea for him. This way he will not be spending separately on a card and on a sticker. So he could use the same sticker for his commercial as well as the consumer. So it's 
um, basically cost effective for him. After this, I suggested stamp printing, which is basically along with uh, the logo itself that he has printed, he could print the rest of the parts of his um, content as well in the in the packaging. Uh, directly on the paper itself. This way, he's not spending even on the stickers anymore. Of course, he wants to choose the, um, you know, the silverish packaging for his uh, commercial purposes. And for that, he will need stickers. And if he creates samples also, these sample pouches that he has planned to introduce uh, for his uh, retailers, uh, if he introduces them also in a small brown paper packaging, he could totally get a smaller stamp and that he could use there and he will still make in a coherent brand look. You can take a look, you can pause it and you can just read through it. It's all in there. After this, I move on to logo, brand logo and brand elements. So I made a small brief where it says about what the logo is and how they need to use it and it needs to go on different platforms. So all those uh, details, the Pavicon, the, lo the logo profile, all of these details I show him over here. And I tell him the logo should be scalable from the largest banner to the smallest one. So uh, that is a small brief I show him as to why the details in his logo were too many and he needs to simplify it. Um, post that, we, I move on to uh, suggest a name change, which is not a completely change in name. I just suggest the change of the spelling of his logo and I tell him why that is beneficial to him. I did some research, even if he removes the name, the extra I in his uh, logo that he had earlier, he could totally, um, you know, have the same meaning and it really matches the um, the brand's voice. The, the talent of his uh, brand is perfect mood freshener and the name Chayesh. Uh, even without an extra eye means that it's relaxing, calmness, it, it, it symbolizes all, all those things. So for that reason, I suggest to him that keep it simple and let's not go overboard with either the design or the confusion with the name. So after that, I go on to suggest to him how he needs to keep his color monochrome so that it's less confusing during the printing. And I show him different lockups in which he can use the name. So I show him a vertical, horizontal and an icon logo. Maybe his designer could work on it and make it a little bit more finessed. So I also suggest to him about the fonts that he needs to use for the brand. Um, I told him to keep a minimum of two fonts. It is up to the designer's discretion as to what fonts they use. Um, they have used a serif, serif font for their uh, logo itself. I hope they keep a serif font for their titles, headlines and they just move on to a simple sans serif font for their um, um, you know, copy and contest. Okay, so post that, I show him one more option uh, with my very bad drawing, uh, as you can see. Um, where I try to give it a very heritage related look because the lady uh, who's picking the tea leaves, it seemed like we could add a little bit of more, um, you know, story to it. So I've shown him these examples. Let's see how he reacts to that. Um, I don't know. You guys won't be seeing his reaction. So, Anyway. So let's go over a quick summary as to how you can create brand identity design consultation for your clients as well. So you need to start with writing notes on your client's brief, what their requirements are. Then go on to writing the actionable steps that you will be taking to provide a solution for them. Then you start doing research based on the notes that you have taken, what changes that you're going to advise and start creating visual options for them. When you create it visually, they understand it much better than just us explaining it verbally. Then you move on to filter down the best options that you have created. You need to show them only maximum three of the options that you think are the best solutions that could be used for the client like I have done. That's it. Thank you so much. I put a lot of effort into this. I hope you guys like this content. I think I provided a lot of value. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. I didn't even say subscribe properly. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I hope to make more meaningful content for you guys. Peace.